Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's SparkerGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? I've got a repeat from last week. Hang on one minute. Boy, is that a good cup of coffee. That really is. Once again, from Black Rifle Coffee Company, I am using the uh, Freedom Fuel uh, in the Keurig cups. Boy, are the, boy, is this a good cup of coffee. Absolutely fantastic. And again, here it is right here. It's a dark roast, a really nice, bold flavor. Uh, that's been enhanced because I'm using the strong button on the Keurig coffee maker that I have. And uh, Larry Sablotny, about a week or so, offered his reason as to why that strong button works. Well, a viewer named Scott offered his reason, and he writes, On the topic of the Keurig strong button, it actually slows down the flow of water through the pod. Now, that makes sense. If the water is going through that Keurig cup, that pod, a little more slowly, then it actually has time to brew that coffee a little longer and strengthen it, making it stronger. <laughs> I think that I think that's how it works. So Scott, thank you very, very much for uh, sending that along. Really do appreciate it. And I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you've slowed down a little bit. Hey, you may have slowed down a little bit this morning because um, you might be celebrating Veterans Day today. Now, Veterans Day was uh, Saturday, November 11th. That was the official federal holiday here in the U.S., but uh, some federal offices and banks observed it on Friday, some observed it on Saturday, and some are observing it today, depending on what state you live in. I checked the calendar and um, how that works, and it looks like it's, it's one of three. So some of you might have the day off this morning, and enjoying uh, Veterans Day. And of course, past Saturday across the pond in England, in the United Kingdom, it was Remembrance Day uh, that they mark the uh, end of uh, World War I. I believe it was, um, it's Remembrance Day because it's the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Uh, folks across the pond, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I got that right. So a very, very solemn and memorable occasion for our friends across the pond. And today we uh, celebrate, or Saturday or Friday, we recognize and celebrate veterans. So if you are a veteran in the viewing audience, thank you very much for your service. I really, really do appreciate it. And again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me uh, this morning. As we like to say, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Yeah, absolutely. Hang on one minute. Hmm. That really, really is absolutely fantastic. And hey, if you're taking me along in your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate it. If you're tuning into the podcast, thanks very much for listening in. I really do appreciate that. Boy, we got a great show for you this morning. Really, really terrific. I have not had a shave before the show. Sometimes, once, every, once, once in a while, I won't shave before the show because... I'm thinking about reviewing a new item, uh, and I want to have a little more of a proving ground, a little more beard growth, and that's just what has occurred. Uh, i got a couple of items in that I'm looking forward to reviewing and sharing with you in new shave gear, so stay tuned for that. That's why I have not shaved, and uh, I really need a, maybe another day I need another head shave here. We'll, we'll see how that uh, works out. But we've got uh, a great couple of shaving tips this morning. Again, we've got some great new wet shave gear items. I've got a couple of items I'm really, really excited to show to you uh, that uh, I will be reviewing, uh, <laughs> hence the extra beard growth. Uh, we have an update on the uh, prize package giveaway. Uh, a little bit of an update there and some news on that. Uh, my thanks to everyone for all your wonderful, wonderful comments. Uh, you know, as you entered uh, the uh, the giveaway, uh, uh, we'll be pulling the winning names this Friday. We'll get to all that on the update. We got some great refill comments regarding the uh, Persona uh, razor blades, and we've got some really, really wonderful questions and comments, and we will uh, be taking a deeper dive on those Persona, persona razor blades as well. So uh, really, really happy that uh, you've uh, tuned in this morning. Thanks so very, very much. I really, really do appreciate it. So let's get the show started and kicked off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip.
Well, this morning we have a shaving tip from viewer Christian Ortlepp. That's spelled O-R-T-L-E-P-P. Christian, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Christian Ortlepp. And he writes, hello, Mark. Here is my shaving tip. Aleppo soap is perfect as a pre-shave or as a shaving soap. Now that's spelled A-L-E-P-P-O. Let me start over. Aleppo soap is perfect as a pre-shave or as a shaving soap. Aleppo soap is a traditional olive oil soap with a core of laurel oil. This soap has an antibacterial and moisturizing effect. This makes it particularly suitable for sensitive skin types. But you can also use it for your hair, as shaving soap, and even for dental care. Laurel oil has an antiseptic effect and has antibacterial activity. Since it inhibits the overactivity of the sebaceous glands, it is highly recommended for acne, dandruff, and impure skin. Through a revitalizing effect on the skin cells, it can be very effective against psoriasis. With a price starting at around $5 per bar of soap, it is also very affordable. I hope that with this shaving tip, many people can use a new pre-shave, etc., and have positive experiences with this natural product like I did. Best regards from Germany, Christian Ortlup. Christian, thanks very, very much for a great shaving tip. There you go, folks. A new pre-shave soap that you can use in your pre-shave routine. I've never heard of Aleppo soap. So Christian, thanks very, very much for sending this along. I'm going to investigate this a little further. And uh, please, folks, if you use Aleppo uh, pre-shave soap or Aleppo soap, uh, let us know what your favorite brands are. And Christian, also, please send along your favorite uh, brands of uh, Aleppo soap, and we'll share that with uh, all the viewers out there. So thanks very, very much for a great shaving tip, a new kind of soap, well, new to me, <laughs> maybe new to you, Aleppo soap that can be used as a pre-shave soap and also as a shave soap. Christian, thank you very, very much for that. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the morning shaving tip segment of the Monday morning mailbag, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Christian, thanks again for a really, really terrific shaving tip this morning. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have an extra shaving tip and it comes from viewer Scott Martin. And he happened to email this to me. And the email subject heading was, Mark, I found a new way to injure myself. <laughs> and uh, Scott writes, hey, Mark, congrats on hitting 10,000 subscribers. It's exciting for the whole wet shaving community. And here's to many more. Thank you very much for the kind words, Scott. I really, really do appreciate it. He continues here. Now, this isn't so much a shaving tip as a cautionary tale and something I never saw coming. I switched from cartridge shaving to straight razor shaving in 2014. And about six or seven years after that, I added DE shaving to my routine. I love both and wet shaving continues to bring me a tremendous amount of enjoyment. In all these years with a straight or a DE, I've nicked myself here and there. It's part of the game and not something that bothers me much. I've never really cut myself in a way that scared me. Well, that ended tonight. My setup was a treat stainless razor blade and a Sterling Soap's medium aggression plate DE razor. I've used both of these for years. The Sterling Razor is one of the crowns of my collection. I love it. So what happened? Take a look at these pictures. Somehow, someway, a cat hair made its way onto my razor during my shave and wrapped around it. For some reason, this didn't just make the blade drag. It actively pulled the blade deep into my upper lip. I yelled, ow! And then the blood started to flow. And it flowed and flowed and flowed. 
This cut was the deepest I have ever received wet shaving for nearly a decade. I don't even understand the physics of how the blade got pulled so deep into my skin, but let your viewers know that if you see a pet hair on your razor, stop. Best always, Scott Martin. Scott, <laughs> thanks very much for that cautionary tale. I don't understand the physics behind that either, but I hope you're healing up well. And uh, I asked him if I could use this, and he wrote back and said, yes, you can use any details you want. Uh, I should clarify, there is one of the pictures that shows how the razor looked when it cut me. If you look closely, you can see one where the cat hair is wrapped around the head of the razor over the blade. Then I pulled it off with tweezers and took the other two pictures. And the criminal responsible for this is named Alfie the Hairy Cat. <laughs> Cheers, Scott. Well, cheers to you as well, Scott. And thanks very much for sending along this extra shaving tip, a, a cautionary note of sorts. So uh, folks, uh, really a very, very good, useful tip. Make sure to check that razor head, especially if you have pets running around your shaving den. Make sure to check that razor head before you go ahead with the shave. Uh, as you know, with my shaves, I like to uh, run the razor under some hot, hot, hot water and kind of get uh, some water on there before I uh, get going with it. But, you know, really, I I'm going to double check my razor head as well because, you, you, you know what, you never know. You might, uh, you might pick up uh, maybe uh, a loose hair from a shave brush that falls into the sink that might get wrapped around the razor head. I'm just kind of spitballing and thinking out loud here, but uh, could be a possibility. You never know. So uh, thanks very much for this extra shaving tip, Scott. And uh, folks, uh, check out that razor from Sterling Shaving because that is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful razor. I asked Scott about that and he said, yes, the Sterling Polished Stainless Steel Razor was a one-time only offering from Rod and Mandy at Sterling. I think they sold for $250 or so. The manufacturing process and getting the razor totally made in the USA turned out to be so difficult and frustrating that Rod said never again. Ironic because he made an incredible world-class razor. Uh, I like it because it was my first DE after shaving with my straights and it has that similar weight and just feels like one solid piece of steel when you tighten it up. Uh, and of course, he sent uh, along those great, great pictures. So uh, yeah, a really, really fantastic razor. It kind of caught my attention when I was going through his shaving tip. So uh, thanks again for sending along those extra pictures of the razor. Scott, really do appreciate it. And again, a great shaving tip. Uh, uh, a wonderful, well, I guess if you call it wonderful, a, a good, let me put it that way, a good cautionary note. Uh, double check that razor head before taking that first shaving swipe. Absolutely. Thanks again, Scott. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast will come right up, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and now on YouTube. Well, this morning we have an update, a couple of updates to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Uh, as you know, we're right in the midst of the contest. There is a video up there where you can enter for uh, the drawing that we're having, five big prizes, all made possible due to the very generous donations and contributions of viewers of this channel. My sincere thanks to all of them. Now, here, here's the first update. There was some troll spam activity early on when the contest was launched a week ago and a lot of eagle-eyed viewers sent that along to me and I was able to go up there and kind of swat down that spam, swat down those trolls, report it to uh, YouTube and it's been filtered out and I'm hoping that that filtering uh, continues and that it, uh, there won't be any more uh, trolling, spamming to disrupt uh, the contest. Again, if you happen to see any of that kind of any of that activity, please email me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and I'll get up there and filter it out and once again report it to YouTube. So as of, as of, as of the creation of this video, 
Uh, I haven't seen any further spam or trolling activity. This is why I said uh, in the contest video that I would not be replying to any of the uh, comments. Uh, first reason was I didn't want to upset all the entries in the hopper by replying to a lot of comments and then my name gets added and added and added and I don't want to do that. And secondly, in the back of my mind, uh, this way, you know, I was thinking in the back of my mind and it happened again, that if, in case there's someone who coming along who is posing as me, you would know it would be an imposter because I very clearly say I'm not replying to any of the comments. So um, again, I'm not replying to any of the comments. I do have one comment up there that's pinned at the very top explaining the trolling, spamming situation. So uh, that's the only comment I have up there. But again, I'm not replying to any of the, any of the comments. Let me say that I want to thank everyone for the very, very kind words. Uh, as you're commenting and entering in the contest video, uh, there's been some really, really wonderful, wonderful comments. So thank you all very, very much. I am very, very grateful to that. Thank you. Now, the second update I wanted to give you was the first prize prize package because as I was shooting video, uh, I kind of uh, shot the uh, first prize package and then at the end said, oh yeah, and here are all the people who donated. And then I kind of moved on to second prize and third prize and that sort of thing. And as I was going through those prize packages, I happened to point out various items and name the individuals who donated that item. So it was I was doing everything kind of on the fly and it was... Uh, um, kind of uh, just kind of evolving into that. I thought that I would just shoot all the prizes and then thank a group of names and then shoot all the prizes and thank a group of names, that sort of thing. And it didn't work out that way. So I wanted to go back to the first prize package and actually let you know who donated what in that first prize package because absolutely fantastic, fantastic contributions from folks out there. Let me just say that Jimmy V, really, Jimmy V Photography really donated a lot to the first prize prize package. There are other folks who contributed, but boy, oh boy, here's what Jimmy V Photography donated the first prize prize package. The Dreamscape Scuttle, uh, Phoenix Shaving Witch Hazel, Phoenix Shaving Strangelet Razor Blades, uh, Phoenix Shaving Mysterium Serum, Hoffman's Affogato Set, consisting of the Shave Soap, the Aftershave, and the EDT, the Phoenix Shaving Star Wisp Shaving Brush, he also donated the $100 gift card to Hoffman's, uh, the Old Dog Shave Soap. Uh, he donated the, uh, the Nivea Body Shaving Shave Sticks, uh, two of those, one of which is in the first prize price package. He donated the Henson Aluminum uh, Razor with the blades that come with that, a Henson Razor. He also donated the $100 uh, RK Razor Blades to go with that razor. Uh, he donated the Captain's Choice coffee mug, and he also had sent along some aftershave sh samples that unfortunately shattered in transit. We replaced those with um, shave soap samples that we had here in the shaved in that were unopened and unused, uh, consisting of eucalyptus, bay rum, and Italia. So we have that covered. So, uh, Jimmy, my gosh, thank you very, very much for all those great, great prizes. He also... Uh, donated Razor Rock Tobacco Number Two Shave Soap, with, ended up in one of the other prize packages, as well as Katie's Katie's Bubbles Irish Coffee Shave Soap. Uh, the 100 Persona Razor Blades. So Jimmy gave quite a bit uh, for the uh, giveaway and the, the 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 lion's share of prize package number one. Thank you very very much, Jimmy. Uh, I also want to recognize Tyler Fike, who gave the uh, Phoenix Shaving Cold Spices shave soap and aftershave. And he also donated the uh, Allen block with the uh, dry dock system in the first price. Charles Price uh, donated that beautiful, beautiful vintage straight razor. Thank you, Charles. Uh, the um, James Sefton uh, donated uh, two of the Thai alum sticks, one of which is in that price package, if I recall correctly. The folks at Pre-Tech uh, donated that electric razor. My gosh, that's in the first price price package. George Haven gave a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the uh, items that ended up in the first price price package were the uh, Sterling British, British Leather Shave Soap, the Sterling Barbershop uh, Shave Soap, uh, that was absolutely fantastic. And he gave a lot of other stuff that ended up in other price packages. 
Uh, Zachary Norton gave those wonderful 3D printed razor cases and shave brush cases. One of each uh, is in the first prize, prize package. Uh, again, I'm going through all my notes here. Um, Wesley Kirby donated the styptic pencil uh, for the first prize, but he also donated a lot of other stuff. Bevel razor, Gillette, the O2 razor, the tech travel size razor. Those ended up in other prize packages. Uh, Heiko Shaves. Uh, very, very kindly tuned and uh, adjusted the Pearl Shaving Flexi Open Comb Adjustable Razor uh, that was sent to us by Pearl Shaving. And then I sent it to him to uh, adjust that spring and the blade gap and that sort of thing. And he did a wonderful job on that. So my thanks to him. That's in the first prize price package. Uh, Vikings Blade sent along a, a Chieftain Odin Razor, the newly designed Chieftain Odin Razor. And, uh, of course, Mark Williams sent all that great coffee. A bag of that coffee is in the uh, first price package. And I think that's got everything from the first price package. So, again, my thanks to all the folks who made first prize really, really wonderful. And a big, big thanks to Jimmy V for really uh, getting the whole ball rolling because he gave the, uh, the Dreamscape Scuttle back during the 9,000 subscriber giveaway. He sent it during that giveaway and said, Mark, set this aside for the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. You're going to make it to 10,000 subscribers. And, I mean, really, thanks for the vote of confidence, Jimmy. I really do, really do appreciate it. He says, you're going to make it to 10,000 subscribers. This, I want this to be in the, uh, uh, the one of the prizes in the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. And I think that when I showed that, that really kicked off and everybody started to donate some wonderful, wonderful gear. Beth Jones gave that beautiful Starry Night uh, uh, lathering bowl and some other great shave soaps. And uh, so many people gave so much. Uh, they were recognized during the prize package giveaway video, except the folks uh, during that first prize. So I wanted to make mention of them and thank them again for their very, very generous contributions that made first prize a really, really outstanding prize. So to wrap up, uh, the uh, prizes will be pulled this Friday, November 17th. So make sure you get up there and enter before November 17th. We'll have a link below where you can get to that video and enter. And the rules are very, very simple. Just subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a comment below that video and have a deliverable address. And that's it. You're entered, opened this, this, the, the, the prize package giveaway, the contest is open to everyone around the world, all viewers around the world. Just subscribe, leave a comment, and have a deliverable address. And that's it. And we'll be pulling the winning names on the 17th, this Friday on the 17th, depending on my schedule. I'm not sure what time. And we'll be posting the results either the uh, Friday night, the 17th, or sometime Saturday on the 18th, depending on when I get things done. So that's how that's all going to uh, shape up. So my thanks again to everybody for making this prize package giveaway possible. Five absolutely outstanding prize packages. And let me once again say thank you uh, and send along sincere thanks and heartfelt appreciation to Jimmy V Photography, Beth Jones, Tyler Fike, Charles Price, Alex Lopez, Scott Martin, James Sefton, George Haven, Jimmy Day, Bill Murphy, Mark Bagwell, Zachary Norton, Wesley Kirby, Heiko Shaves, Chris Witte, Caleb Bowers, Doug Thompson, Wally Pankowski, James Gazda, David and Barb Kais, Todd Stanfield, Jennifer Cook, Mark Williams, Tom Donnarumma, Chris Eikenberry, everyone at Pretech, and all the folks at Vikings Blade. One more note, Alex Lopez also donated that wonderful Cremo shave cream set for the uh, 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway for, for first prize. That's in first prize as well. So my thanks to Alex Lopez. See, I almost... <laughs> I almost forgot it. I almost forgot someone. I thought I had everyone in my notes here. And it's just one of those things. I've just been so very, very grateful for all the all the folks out there, all the viewers out there who have donated so much to make this prize package 
uh, possible. Thank you all very, very much. And thank you again to all the viewers out there for liking, for sharing, for subscribing, for viewing. Thank you all very, very much. I am very, very grateful. So we will see you uh, either on the 17th or the 18th, depending on when I get it done. But the deadline is the 17th sometime this Friday. November 17th, 2023 is the deadline. So make sure you get up there and uh, enter because this is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful giveaway. Five big prizes all being made possible to all those wonderful folks that I just listed. Thank you all very, very much. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. Boy, that is terrific. That is a terrific, terrific cup of coffee. Once again, from Black Rifle Coffee Company, Freedom Fuel. Terrific, terrific dark roast coffee. And again, I use that strong button on my Keurig uh, machine. Absolutely fantastic. Just a great, bold cup of coffee. A real good one for, uh, for the morning. Absolutely. And hey, again, if you're taking me along on your morning commute or your morning drive, thanks very, very much for uh, either watching us on video if you're maybe taking a train or a bus or listening to the podcast if you're, uh, if you're driving. Thanks very, very much for the morning lift. Hey, let's get to some of, these, uh, some of these comments here this morning. This first comment comes from Paul Denali, 6367, and he writes, Both the Wilkinson sword and Persona Platinum blades are as good as any Russian blades I've used. Perhaps not quite as efficient as Gillette Nasset in my experience, but very, very close. Yeah, we've talked about this uh, Russian razor blade plant in St. Petersburg, Russia, closing down, where they make some really, really wonderful uh, Gillette razor blades like the Wizomets and um, the uh, Astras, uh, among, among some of the others that are really, 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 really very, very popular in the wet shaving community. And uh, Mark Bagwell very, very kindly sent the channel these uh, Persona Platinum razor blades. And a lot of viewers are familiar with the Persona brand, and they like this Persona razor blade and some of the others a lot. And uh, really, uh, Paul, thanks very, very much for confirming how nice the Persona blades are and also the Wilkinson sword blades that are made in Germany. These Persona blades are made in Germany and also the Wilkinson sword razor blades that he mentioned are made in Germany. They are terrific, terrific uh, razor blades. And as Mark Bagwell said, uh, they might very well make you forget those Russian blades. <laughs> yeah, forget about those Russian blades. Absolutely. A very, these are very, very good razor blades. Absolutely. And there are a lot of great razor blades out there. So that's why I'm not too concerned about not being able to find those blades uh, being made in Russia anymore. Now, they might be moving the plant to another part of the world. Maybe they're going to move the equipment to another part of the world, like maybe, I don't know, Taiwan or China or India, something like that. Maybe the U.S., who knows? The question is, if they do, uh, is the quality going to be the same as what was being manufactured in Russia? Are they going to move the equipment or are they just going to close things down? You know, who knows? It's all kind of up in the air. But uh, the uh, scuttlebutt is, is they're going to be closing the plant uh, so if you want those blades, you know, you'll have to buy them right now before you can't get them anymore. Uh, but, uh, the point of some viewers out there, including Mark Bagwell, uh, is that, Hey, you know what? There are some great blades out there that are just as good, if not better. And these Persona Platinums made in Germany are terrific. So yeah, uh, thanks very much for, uh, for confirming that, Paul. Really, do, really, really do appreciate it. Uh, viewer Scott, who also goes by the screen name Flynn6306, of course, he gave us the, uh, the info on the Keurig Strong button uh, this morning. He writes, another great Monday morning mailbag on the topic of the Keurig Strong button. It actually slows down the flow of water through the pot. Thanks again, Scott. Really do appreciate that. Secondly, I am really looking forward to the holiday season releases. I was lucky enough to find someone selling unused Phoenix Shaving seasonal sets for a great price and picked up Space Nog, The Shaving, Cosmic Christmas Cookies, 
And, well, he writes here, clean fruit. I think he means clown fruit. Not entirely sure. Uh, also, just bought a slightly used set of cane. Phoenix Shaving knows how to make shaving fun and enjoyable. Yeah, all those scents are really, really terrific. Of course, we talked about uh, the shaving uh, in the uh, last Monday morning mailbag. We also used this this past Wednesday uh, in a review. Boy, this is terrific. I like this scent a lot. It's uh, It's been described kind of a butter bay rum. They call it a ray rum. Uh, it really is terrific. It really is very, very unique. And of course, this was, um, as I recall, I think this was offered on Cyber Monday only. And I happen to look inside my lid here, and it was a limited number. And I happen to get number 45. Can you see that right there? 45, right there. So they only made a limited number. I don't know how many they made, but I got number 45. So I don't know if they're going to be offering this again uh, this Christmas season. Uh, you know what? Check, you know, I, I would say tune in on, on Black Friday and also C Cyber Monday and see what they have to offer. Uh, but uh, this is terrific. And if they offer it, yeah, I highly recommend it. It's terrific. It really, really is. Now, Cosmic Christmas Cookies came in this great space alien coffee mug. <laughs> and that was a great uh, shave soap scent as well. It, it, well, it was Christmas cookies. It just reminded you of Christmas cookies. And, uh, you know, the soap was in the bottom of this mug and I had a lot of great shaves with it. And of course, after the soap was gone, I had this great alien space alien coffee mug. Uh, it really, <laughs> really is terrific. Uh, a, a great kind of, uh, kind of a great sale feature for the, uh, for the shave soap. Again, I don't know if they're going to do that again this year, uh, but Cosmic Christmas Cookies was definitely a favorite. And I do have Space Nog. Space Nog. This is terrific. Boy, what a great scent this is. Oh, yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. This was a great seasonal release. I don't know if they're bringing this back or not. I'm, hard to say. The time I'm, I'm, I'm recording this video, I don't have any information on that. But let me give you the scent profile on Space Nog. Brown sugar, nutmeg, vanilla, light cinnamon, West Indian Bay, tonka bean, benzoin resin, and spiced rum. And as they say here, Spice Nog returns and Bay Rum fans rejoice. Uh, that was from last year. So I don't know if it's returning this year or not, but last year it returned. And yeah, Bay Rum fans did rejoice. I love it. It really is another great variety of Bay Rum with a lot of other great, great ingredients, other scent notes that really, really make it uh, terrific. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using it, this one this season as well. So really, uh, thanks very, very much for mentioning that, Scott. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, just a great recap of some great seasonal scents. And of course, we talked about Sterling Soap's seasonal holiday releases uh, last week. So check out Sterling Soap's because they got some great ones that are available right now. Uh, as well. So check out last week's show where we break them all down or just go on up to Sterling Soaps and, uh, you know, search around up there. You'll see them up there. Really, really terrific seasonal releases from them. And I'm sure other artisans are going to have some great, great uh, seasonal releases as well. And we hope to talk about those uh, this holiday season. Absolutely. Well, here's some breaking news from Phoenix Shaving. Kane returns. That's right. Kane has returned the classic North Pole barbershop scent. Peppermint, corn mint, rose, talc, bergamot, oak moss, vetiver, vanilla. It's year nine, folks, for one of our all-time top holiday favorites, loved by pretty much everyone. Men, women, elves, reindeer, and the toast of the town on the island of broken toys. You can say it's a real crowd pleaser for sure. Yeah, this just broke as I was editing the video. Thought I'd drop it in from Phoenix Shaving. Kane returns. Kane is now available. Uh, Jamie Horn said, fantastic show as always, Mark. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Jamie. Yes, Pasteur Pharmacy is awesome. I have never been to the store, but I have ordered from them. I got my Royal Pearl Simpson T2 shaving brush from them. It is their exclusive. Great show again. How about that? Simpson offers an exclusive brush through Pasteur Shaving. Yeah, we talked about Pasteur Shaving in a previous show. Really, they are a great mecca 
of wet shaving gear for the wet shaving community. Absolutely fantastic. You can go up to YouTube and just type in Pasteur Pharmacy or Pasteur's, and a lot of great uh, videos will come up of wet shavers visiting the store and showing you what's on the shelves and talking to Leon, who uh, runs the establishment there. Yeah, really, really terrific. So uh, thanks very much for confirming how great Pasteur's is, Jamie. Really do appreciate that. Charles Price checked in and said, I work walking distance from the 34th Street store of Pasteur's. It's a great store, and Leon is usually around and always helpful with questions and recommendations. So knowledgeable about what is on every shelf. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks very much for confirming again, Charles. It looks like that 34th Street store is the uh, the primary store, and I think they have one Lexington Avenue, I think, is where it's at. I don't think I've seen any videos on the Lexington Avenue store, but the 34th Street store is probably the one you want to visit if you ever go to New York City. Or maybe visit them both. <laughs> Thanks very much for that, Charles. Really do appreciate it. Uh, the One Baba, also known as viewer Baba. Mark, have you ever heard of Sebum's Gold? That's S-E-B-U-M. Sebum's Gold. They are known for their post-shave serum, but they also do soaps. They are a bit pricey, but I hear great things on their serum. Just curious. I will say that I have tried Chicago Grooming's Good Oleo Post-Shave Serum, and it's affordable and amazing. My absolute current favorite. Great as always, Mark. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, no, I actually, I have not heard of any of those brands. Folks, if you have any other information regarding that, please comment below and let us know. Sebum's Gold and also uh, Chicago Grooming's Good Oleo. That's a post-shave serum. I think he means aftershave. So uh, thanks very much for that, Baba. I really do appreciate it. I'm very, very curious about it. So folks, if you know anything about Sebum's Gold, Sebum's Gold, or Chicago Grooming's Good Oleo, please comment below and let us know. Thanks again, Bob. I really do appreciate it. Viewer Alfred Spencer wrote, A couple other blades that are performing great for me are the Persona Comfort Coated and Persona AccuThrive Med Prep, both made in USA. Another great 3MB. Thanks, Mark. Well, thanks very much for confirming those blades and how, how wonderful they are, Alfred. Really do appreciate it. Of course, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive on the Persona blades, but I can show you these right now, the Persona Comfort Coated right there. These came from viewer Jimmy V. Thank you again, Jimmy. Uh, and of course, we're giving away 100 of these, courtesy of Jimmy V, uh, in the prize package. But yeah, those are great blades. I've never tried the med prep, but um, I had a conversation with Mark Bagwell, and he was saying that those are uncoated. They are a stainless blade that are uncoated, hence their very, very sharp, efficient quality is my guess. Uh, so thanks very much for that, Alfred. Really do appreciate it. Bart Bartlett wrote, another uh, 3MB with lots of shaving info and goodies. Regarding razor blades, your mileage may vary definitely comes into play. Fortunately, besides the Nasset, my favorites are Astra SP, Wilkinson Sword out of India, and Persona Lab Blues. In fact, I find the Lab Blues to be good as the Nasset. So I don't worry about what happens to the Russian Blades or any other brands for that matter. I'm sure I could find another favorite. Yeah, Bart, that's kind of my approach to it as well. There are so many great razor blades out there. I don't think I'm going to have a problem finding uh, some others that uh, will serve me uh, as well. And I will say that um, I have used the Persona Platinum that are made in Germany in uh, a number of different razors. These, these felt like Wizomets to me. I mean, that's how wonderful these are. So yeah, um, you know, there are a lot of great blades out there. So I wouldn't sweat the uh, Russian plant closure too much unless you really, really like a particular blade, then you better stock up now. That's the bottom line here. Um, oh, this, this is great. I asked, what is SLS? Uh, and um, viewer D. Richland wrote the following, and my, my, my sincere thanks to D. Richland. Hi, Mark. I'm a hairdresser, and SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate, has been an industry standard for many years. 
it's what's known as a surfactant. S-U-R-F-A-C-T-A-N-T, surfactant. I think I got the pronunciation of that correct. Which allows oil and water to mix. It is also a foaming agent. Being a surfactant, it is an excellent degreaser and cleaner. It can be a bit harsh for those with very sensitive skin, and there are alternatives out there. It is also used in cosmetics and food as it prevents clumping of the various ingredients. In the last 15 years or so, it has become somewhat controversial due to its link with cancer, but the studies are inconclusive. Also, when used in soaps, be it shampoo or shaving soap, it doesn't stay on the skin that long and is rinsed off. I've been in the hairdress business for 46 years and haven't had a problem with it. I look forward to your content, especially the Second Cup podcast, which I listen to when I'm at the gym. One more thing before I go. I got into shaving with the safety razor because it is so much cheaper than the cartridges that I've been using for years and years. Ironically, but not tragically, I've spent a ton <laughs> I've spent a ton more money than I used to with cartridges because I'm having so much fun exploring all the different soaps and creams that are available. Hopefully, I'll settle into a few favorites. Until then, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, there's that rabbit hole again. So thanks very much for that, D. Richland. I really, really do appreciate the comment, and I appreciate the information on SLS. Thank you so much for following up with that. I really, really do appreciate it. Jimmy V Photography wrote this as well regarding Second Cup, the Second Cup podcast. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't heard it, it's available here on YouTube. So check it out. It uh, usually comes on. It usually debuts about seven a.m. every Monday morning, uh, two hours after the Monday morning mailbag starts. It's it's uh, it's broadcast. Uh, Monday morning mailbag usually gets scheduled for five a.m. on Monday morning, and Second Cup at 7 a.m., just so you know. Jimmy V. Photography wrote, Love the second cup. Your points about the St. Petersburg plant are spot on. There are tons of alternate blades out there. Hopefully, Procter & Gamble will open new factories and produce those blades again at the same quality level. Yeah, hey, thanks very much for that, Jimmy. That's the hope, I think, of a lot of wet shavers in the wet shaving community, that those blades will be produced at the same quality level somewhere else around the globe, but you're absolutely correct. There are a lot of other blades out there that are just as good. That's what we were talking about during that Second Cup podcast and kind of what we're reaffirming here during this refill segment, that uh, there are a lot of great blades out there. And uh, this might uh, kind of get you out of your comfort zone with those uh, Russian-made blades and kind of force you, so to speak, to look for some other blades. And you'll be surprised that there are a lot of great blades out there by uh, some really, really great uh, brands. Uh, again, we talked about Persona. A lot of wet shavers like the Bic Chromiums. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of wet shavers like the Schick brand of DE razor blades. Uh, you know, the Strange Lit blades by Phoenix Shaving are very, very good. Vikings Blade offers a very, very good razor blade. So there are a lot of great, A-Best razor blades are, are terrific. Or <laughs> Lord razor blades. Uh, they're just coming to me off the top of my head. We've used a lot of different razor blades on, uh, on this channel in doing reviews. And there are a lot of great blades out there. So thanks very much for that, Jimmy. Really do appreciate it. And again, folks, uh, I guess the bottom line here is there are some good alternate razor blades out there that we've mentioned. And if you have a particular blade that you really, really love that has been coming out of that Russian plant, stock up now just in case. That's kind of the bottom line here. And that wraps up another refill segment for this week. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I have not shaved because I want to give a little bit of a proving ground to some uh, new items that uh, arrived in the shave den. Here they are right here from Andrew at AP Shave Company. Right here, Andrew very, very kindly sent along 
a couple of beautiful, beautiful shaving brushes uh, available at AP Shave Company. We'll have a link below where you can check out these brushes. Uh, so my thanks to Andrew for sending these along. Now, I did take a sneak peek of them, got the information all set up in show notes, but I really haven't opened them fully uh, as of yet. We're going to do that right now together. Uh, here is the first one here. I have it just slightly marked on the bottom so I know <laughs> which one I'm looking at here. Let me... Let me take it out of here. Now, first of all, let me show you the box. The box is great. There is their social media contacts right there, Facebook and Instagram. And on the other side uh, panel, they give you uh, information about the care of a shave brush, that sort of thing. And again, it, it's a terrific, terrific packaging. Really, really nice presentation. So uh, it makes a great, great gift. Absolutely. So here it is right here. It comes wrapped in tissue paper very, very nicely. And again, I took a sneak peek. Let me just set this aside. This is a Mula STF in an AP Shave Company manufactured by Shave Mac handle. A 25 millimeter STF extra large Shave Company crushed mud resin handle number 84. This is manufactured by Shave Mac and this has a 25 millimeter uh, knot on it, a beautiful, beautiful synthetic knot. And uh, as they uh, write here, uh, manufactured by one of the world's most famous brush makers in Shave Mac, this partnership between AP Shave Company and Shave Mac brings extremely high quality shaving brushes manufactured to perfection by Shave Mac. Each handle is made of inlace acrylester, a type of polyester resin from Noblesville, Indiana, USA. These pearl essence blanks look incredible when finished and have amazing depth when viewed in the light. And I can tell you right now, that is absolutely true. <laughs> absolutely beautiful. A premium hair grade, this synthetic brush consists of seven different types of fiber varying in thickness and length. This variation allows for a brush head that, without compromising on backbone, is uniquely soft and easy to manage. And that really is a beautifully, beautifully soft, soft brush. Really, really, really terrific. And it does not compromise on backbone at all. Tied by hand, the silver tip fiber was created to provide a completely vegan and lower maintenance product that would emulate all the benefits of a premium natural hair brush head. Easy to care for and easy to use, the silver tip fiber brush still produces a thick and creamy lather from small amounts of shaving soap and cream. Unlike natural hair, however, the silver tip fiber brush is somewhat more stable and resistant to daily wear. A little more forgiving in its maintenance, the silver tip fiber brush dries quickly and is more resistant to shaving soaps and creams. Durable but suitable for even the most sensitive of skin types, silver tip fiber is uniquely soft at its fine tips, guaranteeing a gentle and pleasant experience without compromising on the desired backbone of a quality brush head. The handle height is 50 millimeters and the loft is 54 millimeters approximately. Feels great in the hand. It does have what I guess I could call a beehive kind of design there. Absolutely gorgeous. It does have that depth when the light hits it. It really is terrific, and it's a great size for the shave den, and I imagine you could travel with this very, very easily as well. A terrific, terrific shaving brush. That's why we've got a little more hair growth here. We're going to be uh, firing this one up uh, for a review very, very soon. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful brush. My thanks to Andrew at AP Shave Company for sending this one along. Absolutely beautiful. Again, this is a Mula STF in an AP Shave Company manufactured by Shave Mac Handle. Uh, this is a this is called the Crushed Mud Crushed Mud Resin Handle Number Eighty Four. But absolutely beautiful, beautiful shaving brush from AP Shave Company. Thank you very very. Thank you very, very much, Andrew. We will be reviewing this, which is why we got, <laughs> which is why we're bringing in some extra beard growth. He also sent along this one. This is absolutely another, another beautiful, beautiful brush. Again, I took a, uh, a sneak peek of it. We're going to look at it together here. Let me open it up again. Same great packaging, same great presentation. Here it is right here. Okay, let's 
wrapped up. Check this out. This is absolutely marvelous. Look at that. <laughs> there, that is etched. This dinosaur skeleton, skeleton, dinosaur skeleton is etched in the handle. You can feel that right there, like that. How about that? The handle has a beautiful tapered feel to it that fits so very naturally into the hand, and it's just really, really terrific. This is a G5C brush. The Knot won Knot of the Year in 2022 with another custom handle, Dinosaur Etched Series Ivory Handle. Now, uh, this fits a 24 millimeter and 26 millimeter knot. So what we have here is a 26 millimeter G5C Premium Synthetic Knot. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the color of this handle right here. And check out the bottom right here, okay? Check out that, that bottom. There's a coin in the bottom there. Look at that. I'm just going to rotate that a little bit. How, how about that? Isn't that amazing? Wonderful. This handle is etched with the silhouette of a dinosaur skeleton. All images used for this series are CCO public domain images. Dinosaur skeleton. Not only are dinosaur skeletons cool to look at, they're also an important reminder about the history of our planet and how lucky we are to be inhabiting it. So an absolutely beautiful, beautiful synthetic synthetic shaving brush with a G5C premium synthetic knot. I'll link to this one as well so you can read up on uh, more information on the uh, synthetic shaving knot. Uh, the G5C knot is really, really terrific. It is a beautiful, beautifully, it is a beautifully, beautifully soft knot, and it has some nice, nice backbone to it. And boy, doesn't that handle look absolutely cool. And again, it's etched, so you can kind of feel. Yeah, <laughs> you can feel the skeleton as you run your finger over it. You can feel the dinosaur skeleton. That's really, really neat. Absolutely beautiful. Love the tapered handle. Love the ivory color. And uh, love the G5C knot. This is a very, very good knot. If you're familiar with the G5C knot, you know why it was knot of the year in 2022. Uh, absolutely fantastic, fantastic shaving brush. I believe that coin gives this a little more heft. Really, really nice, nice shaving brush. So two absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous shave brushes from AP Shave Company. My thanks to Andrew for very, very kindly sending these along and allowing me to share it with all the viewers out there. We're going to get a review done on these, which is why we got a little bit of uh, extra beard growth going on here because I want to actually see how much lather we're going to generate with these uh, knots and uh, see how much coverage we're going to get. I'm expecting some wonderful lathers and some absolutely fantastic, fantastic coverage uh, due to these wonderful, wonderful knots on these absolutely splendid, splendid shaving brush handles. So folks, check it out. A couple of absolutely beautiful shaving brushes from AP Shaving Company, Dinosaur Etched Shaving Brush, and also the Crushed Mud Resin Handle Number 84 Shaving Brush with the beautiful Mula Synthetic Knot. We'll have links below. Again, Andrew, thank you very, very much. Viewer Wally Pankowski very, very kindly sent along the following review on my blade's new Silver Blade. And he writes, Mark, here's my review of the new my blade's Silver Blade. I have been given clearance to reveal the blade that I have been using. I was fortunate enough to get a couple of blades to try. The company is my blades. They first came out with the platinum version, which I have discussed. That blade is smooth and mild. I found that it works best in a mid-aggressive razor and delivers an excellent shave. This new mystery blade is their second blade produced. It is called the Silver. The blade is a bit thicker and harder than the Platinum. I have found that this blade works great with mild, mid, and aggressive razors. This is strictly my opinion, but I have found it to be as sharp as the feather and extremely smooth. Your mileage may vary. The price is excellent. I am normally a one and done blade user, but I use this one four times and the sharpness and comfort to me were the same throughout. I have no financial or personal interest in this company. I saw the product and decided to give it a try. I am happy I did. The only downside is that they only come in packs of 100. No individual tucks of five or 10 are available. 
The coating on the silver is a proprietary coating. I don't know and frankly don't care. I only care if it gives me a great shave, and it did. If you're interested, their website is www.my-blades.com. Great shaves to all. Thank you, Wally Pankowski. Wally, thanks very much for this great, great review. And again, it fits in with our kind of a theme, our kind of topic going on in today's show, that there are some great razor blades out there. So don't sweat that Russian plant closing in, in St. Petersburg too much because there are some great alternative blades. And thanks for letting us know about this one from my blades, the silver. Wally, thank you again very, very much. Well, here's something we shared in a previous Second Cup podcast, and we'd like to share it again here on the Monday Morning Mailbag because we have some great photos that go along with this wonderful review from viewer Mark Bagwell. This is his review of the Hermit Shell travel case. And Mark writes, so you've just bought a dot bag. Well done. Now it's time to load up everything you need for a traveling shave. But what about your razor? It's probably a favorite. Last thing you want is to drop it in a bag with everything else where it can get scratched. So now you need a razor case that's carried inside the bag for extra protection. This is where the Hermit Shell travel case comes in. Here are some photos. As you can see, the case may specify a Merker 34 or 37, but there is plenty of room for a larger razor. And it's great for those vintage Gillettes so many of us have. And check out the fish netting on the other side. Now, that will hold plenty of blades. So the bag is efficient, inexpensive, and will protect your razor. Uh, yeah, this is really a terrific, terrific case. Love the fish netting. Love the fact that it will hold a variety of sizes of razors, even those large razors, even those vintage Gillettes. Absolutely fantastic. And the price is a really, really nice price point, $13.99. So again, this is the Hermit Shell Travel Case for the Mercur 34 or 37 or your vintage razor or any large razor you might have. It accommodates a wide variety of razors out there and a great place for razor blades. So thanks again for a really, really terrific, terrific review of this, Mark. Really do appreciate it. Folks, we'll have a link to it below. It's available on Amazon. Viewer Rodney Ripplinger sent this along regarding Parasso wood and spice shaving cream. And he wrote, Mark, does this shave cream sound like it might be a good addition to one's den? Uh, this is Parasso wood and spice. This is part of their single blade series of shaving creams. Uh, and as they write here, uh, the enveloping warmth of fine woods with a cedar heart and notes of rock rose, the spicy scent of cumin and saffron mixed with mildly sweet vanilla, an intense and rewarding aromatic sensation gives a feeling of comfort and warmth. Uh, now, they are saying here it's available directly from Parasso or exclusively available at Parasso USA. It's $12 a tube. And as they write here, the single blade shave line consists of high performance formulas specifically created for use with a single blade razor, initially exclusively for use by professional barbers and now available for you to use at home. Parasso single blade shaving cream is a concentrated formula abundant in moisturizing emollients like coconut oil and glycerin to soften, protect, and prevent irritation during a shave. This rich cream has been specifically formulated to be the ideal thickness and consistency to use with a single blade razor. While created for use with a single blade, this shave cream can be used with a multi-blade razor with proper care. The high concentration of oils may clog a multi-blade razor, so please rinse between each pass. Now, as they say here, 90% of the ingredients are of, are of natural origin, cruelty-free and no ingredients of animal origin, no parabens, uh, phthalates, silicones, mineral oils, artificial colors, or SLS. <laughs> That's where SLS came from. And again, thanks to D. Richland for explaining to us what that was. And of course, it's made in Italy. Now, Rodney followed up saying, Hi, Mark. While watching your show today, I made a virtual trip to Pasteur's Pharmacy that you talked about. 
I found the Barber's version of Parasso's Wood and Spice. This is the same size and configuration that Paul H. was using recently. Supposedly, this particular product is only available directly from Parasso. Apparently not. Pasteurs are currently sold out. Perhaps they can't get it anymore for the sale in their store. I may contact them to see if that is the case. Man, they have a lot of stuff. Rodney, yeah. So folks, check out Pasteur's and see if they still have a wooden spice from Parasso. Uh, and uh, I think they have a link on most of their product pages or all their product pages where you can be notified with an email when it gets restocked. So again, Pasteur is an absolutely great, great uh, source of wet shaving gear for the wet shaving community. Wet shaving mecca is a lot of wet shaving uh, enthusiasts are calling it. So Rodney, thanks very, very much for the heads up on Parasso Wooden Spice and also the possible availability of it at Pasteur's. Really, really do appreciate it. Your Andrew Hill checked in with a new offering from Denton Magic. Uh, and he writes, I just received these newly available products from Denton Magic. It's the Truffle Shuffle Shave Soap and Aftershave Splash. The fact that it has a Goonies character on it was a selling point for me. It has a nice warm chocolate scent, perfect for the holidays. I paired up the soap with my Rockwell 6C and got a wonderfully smooth shave. It left a very nice soft feel on my skin. As always, great Monday morning mailbag this week. Have a great week. And Andrew, thanks very, very much for the heads up on this new shave soap and splash offering from Denton Magic, Truffle Shuffle Shave Soap and Aftershave Splash with a Goonies character on it. <laughs> really, really terrific. Folks, we'll have a link to it below. Andrew, thank you again very, very much. Well, in a previous Monday morning mailbag, viewer Bob LaRoe gave us a heads up on a piece of razor blade jewelry. It was a necklace with a, a, a razor blade on the chain. <laughs> a really kind of neat uh, piece of jewelry. Well, Roderick McLeod found this as well. And he writes, here's a link to a ring on Amazon that's available in black, silver, and gold colors. There are other DE blade jewelry options on Etsy, eBay, etc. As well. Now, here's what he sent along. This is the Rofusen, R O F U S N, I believe that's how it's pronounced, Rofusen stainless steel razor blade ring for men and women. <laughs> how about that? It's a ring that has razor blades. You can have razor blades wrapped around your finger when you wear this ring. Really, really neat. And it's $6.99. And again, it comes in three different colors silver, black, and and gold. Uh, all you have to do is select your ring size and you're good to go. How about that? So thanks very much for uh, passing that along, Roderick. Really, really do appreciate it. Interested in finding out if there are other kinds of razor, DE razor, uh, razor inspired jewelry out there. Uh, as Roderick said, uh, there are other options, other items available on Etsy and eBay. So really, really interested in uh in featuring some of those in upcoming Monday morning mailbags. Folks, if you find anything, hey, send it in. We'll share it with all the viewers out there. So a couple of neat items. First, the necklace, and now this ring, razor blade ring. Really, really terrific. Thanks again, Roderick. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, this past Friday, we had an evening head shave review of Fine Accoutrements Italian Citrus Shave Soap. This is their duplication of Aqua de Parma Colonia. And uh, we've tried different shave soaps that have that scent, that particular scent. This one is very good, but it's very, very subtle. However, the 21st century soap base is an absolutely beautiful soap base, and it makes heaps and heaps of beautiful, creamy, rich, yogurty lather. Absolutely. Check out the uh, review that ran this past Friday. It was a wonderful, wonderful evening head shave with Fine Accoutrements Italian Citrus Shave Soap. Really, really terrific performing shave soap. Makes a wonderful lather. And again, the scent, Aqua de Parma Colonia, very good, 
very subtle, very refined, nice and gentlemanly. You can pair it up with a variety of citrus-based aftershave splashes if you want. It won't overwhelm or get in the way of any of those. So I really, really enjoyed it a great deal. Fine accoutrements, Italian citrus shave soap. Now, as many of you know, I really, really love the Supply SE Single Edge Injector Razor with the uh, Nick Stop technology right there, that fin guard there. Boy, this is really a terrific, terrific single edge injector razor. Like it a lot. Well, last week I received an email from the folks at Supply. They were offering a limited edition, while supplies last, Supply Gold Starter Set. Now, uh, I'm hoping by the time this airs that some of these limited edition sets are still available. Can't promise you if they are or not. They also have an early Black Friday sale going on. But anyhow, let me share with you what they wrote here. The Single Edge SE, engineered to be the safe, easy single edge shave you've been looking for. Easy for beginners, suitable for all skin types, available in multiple alloy finishes. Well, this one is available in uh, gold, right? You also get black label uh, razor blades. You get a pack of those. Uh, you also get their ultra lather shaving cream. You get their healing post shave. You get a silver tip synthetic shave brush and uh, you get a holiday gift box for gift giving. And you also get a razor stand, normally $29 for that. They're throwing that in as well. So you get the razor, the stand, the shave cream, the, the post shave, the uh, silver tip shaving brush, the blades to go with the razor, all for $109. They're taking off $50 for that. And it's in this beautiful, beautiful gold finish. So I wanted to share that with you. I'm hoping that it's still available or some of those are still available by the time this airs. If you're interested, we'll have a link below. Check it out. They also have an early Black Friday sale going on right now. So uh, lots of great stuff uh, going on from a lot of great uh, wet, wet, wet shaving manufacturers and artisans and that sort of thing as we head into the holiday season. This offering from the folks that supply, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this morning, by the time this airs this morning, that this gold razor, uh, this gold SE razor set is still available. Fingers crossed. We'll have links below. Check it out. And that wraps up this week's Wet Shaving Gear segments. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. Well, earlier in the show, we promised a little bit of a deep dive on the uh, Persona razor blades. And this all came about because Mark Bagwell very kindly sent along the Persona platinum razor blades that are made in Germany to the channel. We've used and reviewed these. I like these a lot. They've reminded me of Wizomet uh, razor blades and a variety of razors that I've used. <laughs> I like them a lot. Anyhow, uh, there are some similarities and differences to some of the Persona branded razor blades out there. It is a bit confusing. I don't fully understand it. Maybe you can help me make sense of it. Uh, here is what Scott wrote. This is uh, Flynn6306. That's his screen name. Uh, I ended up buying a 200 pack of these blades after trying them in a sample pack. The best blade I've used so far for head shaves specifically. Yeah, again, he's referring to the Persona Platinum razor blades. Uh, terrific, terrific razor blade. I like them a lot. Uh, Chris Borab wrote, Persona Platinums are in my top three with Gillette Platinums and Bic Chromium. I have done some real-time comparisons using matched leaf razors and matched Henson Milds between the Persona Comfort Coated and Persona Platinums, and they are both great. But I do prefer the Platinums. Yeah, they're terrific. They're absolutely terrific. Uh, Jimmy V wrote the following regarding the uh, Persona razor blades. He said, the ones I have are the ones in the plastic tuck with the blade bank underneath. I believe he's referring to the Persona Platinum again because these do have the... Um, 
Let me show it to you here. These do have the uh, plastic case right here. Plastic case with the blade bank underneath. Last night I did a shave with one for the first time in a long time. About 36 hours beard growth. I used it in my Henson TI Medium with Tea Party 508. It was a great shave. Very smooth and efficient. No negative alum feedback. I really enjoyed the shave. I need to do a few more shaves with the blade to get a real feel for it. I'll do a shave tomorrow for the second shave with the blade as a test again. I really wish my beard grew faster. <laughs> Laugh out loud. For sure, the adage of revisiting blades is an accurate one. I seem to remember not overly caring for them when I first tried them. I seriously think as our technique and lather skills develop, it opens up new blade opportunities. That's a really very, very good point, Jimmy. Thanks very, very much for mentioning that. He continues here. I am not so worried about that St. Petersburg factory. I just did a rough calculation. I have around 1,500 blades in my den. Uh, times by two as I use each blade twice. So that's 3,000 shaves. I usually shave every other day, so I have something meaningful to shave. But even if I shave 360 days a year, that gives me like 8.3 years, even if I don't buy another blade. And what are the odds of that happening? <laughs> yeah, absolutely great comments regarding the uh, Persona Platinum Blades. But of course, uh, we also mentioned the Persona Comfort Coated Blades right here. Now, the Comfort Coated Blades are made in USA and the Persona Platinums are made in Germany. But here's the thing that, uh, that we've uh, found in looking at this, the Persona Platinum are manufactured here in the back here, manufactured by Edgewell. See that right there? Manufactured by Edgewell. Whereas the uh, Persona Comfort Coated, and I believe these are known as the Lab Blues, these are made by uh, right here in the bottom here. Here's where it is, right here on the bottom. Uh, Accutech. See that right over there? Accutech. Okay, so it seems that the Persona blades uh, made in the USA are made by Accutech. We talked about Accutech and AccuThrive, that sort of thing. And that the blades that are made in, overseas and other parts of the world are made by Edgewell. Uh, and they're both Persona brand blades. And I don't fully understand how that works out with these companies. Uh, what exactly is going on? Edgewell makes Persona blades. Uh, Accutech makes Persona blades. Uh, I have one other blade I want to show you here. These are Persona Double Edge Comfort Coated Blades right here. Okay, these are made by Edgewell. These were made in Israel, and I don't know if you uh, if you buy this particular packaging, if it's still made in Israel or if it's made in Germany. My understanding is that Persona closed all their manufacturing facilities in Israel and moved everything to Germany. So if you buy these, chances are these will probably come out of Germany. So it is a little bit confusing. Confusing. Accutech Persona, Edgewell Persona, uh, that sort of thing. I, I don't know. Now, does anybody know the, the, the accurate full story of why Persona has two different kinds of, I guess you could say, parent companies behind them, Edgewell and Accutech. Uh, and they're, they're making uh, razor blades around the world and in USA, but it seems that if they're made in USA, they're made by Accutech. If they're made by Edgewell, they're made overseas and they're brought in, I think, uh, as Mark Bagwell uh, uh, mentioned, by a third party, by third party distributors. I think that's what's going on. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how all this works, but to be perfectly honest with you, they're great razor blades, <laughs> regardless if they're an Edgewell persona or if they're an Accutech persona. But I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of a deep dive on that, get some comments from some viewers about how wonderful the persona platinums are and also how the uh, comfort coated uh, are terrific, terrific blades. These, of course, these I believe the comfort coated are also known as lab blues. I believe that's what these are known as. And of course, the Persona Platinum are just known as Persona Platinums. Um, they're they're all they're both great, great razor blades. And I'm going to do a comparison myself uh, between the Platinums and the Comfort Coated 
uh, to kind of get an idea how they stack up. And I'm going to do a razor for razor comparison, a matching razor uh, comparison, as Chris had, had done. Uh, but again, a little bit confusing. If you know why some Persona blades are Edgewell and some Persona blades are Accutech, please comment below and let us know. Uh, was there something else I wanted to mention regarding this? Yeah, I think this is what's going on here. And I'll just throw this out again. Accutech bought the rights to make Persona blades in USA and Edgewell makes Persona blades or they have the right to make Persona blades around the world. I think that's what's kind of in it. That's kind of it in a nutshell, I think. Comment below and let us know uh, what the what the real story is, if you have any other information to kind of sort this out. Regardless of, of uh, if it's Edgewell or Accutech, uh, both of these blades, uh, the Persona Comfort Coated, also known as Lab Blues, are absolutely fantastic. And the Persona Platinum really, really are wonderful, wonderful razor blades. And if you were lucky enough to get any of these double-edged Personas that were made in Israel, boy, these are terrific. So I've got a few left. As you can see, I've kind of gone through them. But uh, even though I can't get these, uh, again, made in Israel, unless there's some stock still left on Amazon, uh, boy, these Persona Platinums are absolutely terrific, the ones that are made in Germany. So that's kind of the long and short of it. Again, comment below. Let us know. Uh, my thanks to uh, Chris and Scott and Jimmy for some great comments regarding uh, their use uh, and their um, their use and their comments and their experience with the Persona Platinum Razor Blades. So thanks again, gentlemen. Really, really do appreciate it. Folks, comment below. Let us know. <laughs> it is a little bit confusing and uh, sure would like to sort it out. Looking forward to reading everyone's comments on this. Thanks again. Oh, oh, one more thing regarding Persona Razor Blades. Viewer Robert Ross wrote, Mark, I asked an artificial intelligence bot in Bing about Persona Blades, and below is the answer. And here's what uh, AI wrote back. Persona Double Edge Razor Blades are made in different locations depending on the type and quality of the blades. According to the web search results, some of the possible places where Persona Blades are made are... Israel, the Persona Platinum Double Edge Razor Blades IP Blue are made from Swedish steel in Israel. USA, the Persona Carbon Steel Single Edge Blade Dispenser and the Persona Stainless Steel Round Corners Slitter Blade are made in the USA. The Persona brand is part of Edgewell Personal Care Company and the blades are manufactured in a plant operated by Accutech Incorporated in Verona, Virginia. Germany, the Persona Platinum Chrome Super Stainless Steel Double Edge Blades are now made with Swedish steel in Persona's plant in Solingen, Germany. I hope this information helps you. Well, thanks very much for sending this along, Robert. Uh, some more clues as to what's going on. Uh, a little more confusion, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think the Israel plant is open still, but I could be wrong. Uh, there you are, folks. If you have anything to add to what Bing AI sent along, please comment below and let us know. Thanks again, Robert. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Rodney Ripplinger checked in, and he wrote the following regarding Ogallala Bay Rum. We have the aftershave here, and we also have the shave soap in a shave bowl right here. And uh, Rodney wrote, Hi Mark, I watched your recent video on the Ogallala Bay Rum Soap. Great stuff, isn't it? I have one puck about three quarters gone and a new one that I haven't used much. Why? I think because it's so cheap that I think I have to use my more expensive stuff while they still have their full scent. After seeing your video, I took out my Bay Rum Puck and put it in my Charmin Bowl and did a shave with it. You were using the Charmin Bowl too, weren't you? Yes, this is it right here, the Charmin Bowl. This uh, really did a nice job of uh, seeding that uh, Bay Rum, uh, Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap Puck in there. And uh, I really like it. And as I mentioned, the Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap really uh, lends itself uh, a little better to uh, face lathering than it does bowl lathering, in my opinion. Your mileage may vary. Here's what he continues saying here. I haven't used my Razorine razor for some time. Last night, I decided today was going to be the day. 
I'm still a little bit intimidated by it. I think I figured out my problem with it when there is one. First of all, I have to go slow and be very deliberate with its use. No autopiloting with this one. I find accidents happen when I can't see exactly what I am doing with the razor, mostly because the head of the razor is so small and thin. I sometimes in the past started a shaving stroke with the razor head not exactly square with the area being shaved. Then I get an ouchie. Mindfully shaving, I don't have a problem like that. I pushed the envelope this time and did a few J strokes. No nicks or cuts at all. Very smooth at 25 degree angle. Lots of blade feel though, which I don't mind. Done right like this, this razor gives me my closest shave of any, even including the Mula R41. Now that you know the pitfalls, are you prepared to get one for yourself? Ha ha, Rodney. <laughs> well, we've mentioned the uh, Razorine razor uh, before on the show. Uh, thanks again to Rodney for pointing it out. Uh, I just wanted to give the folks a little bit of background on that particular razor. It can be rather aggressive, but it really is a very, very nice looking razor as well. And it does have that slim trim razor head, as Rodney pointed out. We'll have a link below where you can get one for yourself or investigate a little further. But I wanted to include his comments regarding Ogallala Bay Rum Shave Soap because I like the shave soap quite a bit. Now, if you saw my review of the shave soap and the uh, aftershave, this aftershave has a really big kick. It says that they you can use it as pre-shave, and I really applied it liberally, as they say right here. Apply generously, right there. Apply generously. And my gosh, this really heated up my face a lot. I, it was really warm, and I had to rinse off. Luckily, the uh, shave soap had a nice calming effect. And I had uh, mentioned that uh, I thought that uh, less was better for me when using the aftershave. And uh, in spraying it into my hand, maybe a spray, spray and a half. I have tried to work my way up to maybe two or three sprays and have really not been able to do that successfully. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep working with it and see what, see, what, uh, see what happens. I also happen to mention in a previous Monday morning mailbag that I don't think this, for my skin, I don't think this plays well with menthol. I followed up with a, um, a, a neutral scent a neutral scented mentholated balm, and I think that uh, developed a little irritation for me. Not entirely sure if that was the cause, but uh, I have got an email into the folks at Ogallala regarding this aftershave, pre-shave um, skin toner, as they say, uh, and see what they have to say about it, about its use. Again, it, it says, uh, shake well, apply generously. Shake well, apply generously. Maybe that's where I'm making my mistake. Maybe I'm not shaking well enough before I apply. That could be. You know what? To be honest with you, I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I shook this very well before applying it uh, in either review or uh, uh, the other uses that I've that I've uh, used this with. The other the other shaves I've used this with. So maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe I gotta you know, shake it well and then apply it. Maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not entirely sure. Anyhow, when they write me back, uh, I will share their answers with you regarding their aftershave because I like the scent and used sparingly as an aftershave, it has a nice a nice kick to it. It feels, it feels fine and uh, it, it does do a nice job at toning the skin. I like a lot. I just can't overuse it. So if you are using the Ogallala Bay Rum aftershave, uh, let me know what your experiences with it are and have been uh, because I'm really, really curious. I like the scent a lot and I really like the shave soap a lot. Again, great for face lathering. Really, really enjoy it. So that's kind of my update regarding Ogallala Bay Rum. Again, when I hear from the company, um, I will let you know what their answer is and maybe it'll shed a little more, maybe it'll shed a little more light uh, on their aftershave. And again, maybe I'm just not shaking it enough. <laughs> that might be something as simple as that. So uh, thanks again to Rodney for uh, bringing up the subject of Ogallala. And thanks again for giving us an update on your razor and razor. Folks, we'll have a link to both of these products below. Thanks again, Rodney. Really do appreciate it. 
And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag for this week. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerani where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week. Thank you.